Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. Welcome back to our today's Sembang Santai. So, for your information, today is today's session is our final episode for this Sembang Santai. InsyaAllah in future, kami akan buat lagi Sembang Santai mungkin siri kedua. So, just stay tuned dengan kami. So, before we get started, uh, we as a production team would like to thank you guys because keep tuning in our uh, our live and support our Sembang Santai session every week. So, we really appreciate you guys. And I hope for the upcoming season for the Sembang Santai, we will get more support from you guys. So also, I would like to ask you, you all to like share our life to today. And so other people who may interested in our topic can join us. So as for today, Sembang Santai topic, Sembang Santai topics, uh, breaking into tech and how you are UX designer bring web apps to life. We will talk basically about user interface, user experience, the concept of UI UX and so on. So sebelum kita mula, uh, let me introduce first our guest. So for our guest today, uh, his name is Raymond Tian and currently works as Head of User Experience Design for Touch and Go Digital. Also, kalau tidak silap saya lah, Mr. Raymond ni dia berada dalam UI UX punya industri sudah lebih kurang 6 tahun. So orang kata banyak experience sudah lah dia dapat dari field ni. Jadi for you guys, siapa yang uh, audience yang tengok ni, kalau ada soalan jangan takut, jangan uh, segan, just Letak soalan di komen. So, tanpa membuang masa lagi, ah, marilah kita jemput tetamu spesial kita pada hari ini. Hello. Hi. Hi, Raman. Hi. Oh, thanks, thanks for inviting. Yeah, I'm very good. So, are you excited to share with us? Yeah. I think I'm more excited when I know it's the, the final season. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you, are, you are the final guest. So, yeah. Wow. So, uh, Ray, before we get uh, deep inside about our topic today, So can you share with us serba sedikit latar belakang mungkin a little bit about your uh, career journey. So just I'm being informed that you took arts during your foundation days. So how do you transition from arts to multimedia systems? And when you start your career as multimedia, multimedia designers, then you jump into UI UX, right? So why you choose the yeah. UI UX part? Um, I think to answer, there's two questions there. So yeah. I think the first question is, I think my, my education. Uh, well, um, very interesting journey I had. Uh, potentially it, it's way too long to explain, but I'll try to sum it up, right? So I actually uh, started off as uh, to join a multimedia system itself uh, because I like to do uh, sound engineering and uh, films. That was my passion at the time. So uh, so happened that course had provided me uh, those kind of subjects. Uh, so I went into multimedia, not really knowing uh, what what that the uh, whole multimedia trend at time was. It was very long ago. It was just a hype. So joining um, while fulfilling all my passion about films and, and, and recording, right? I think that's where I started uh, doing some venturing into, uh, I think, digital animation, uh, web animation and stuff like that. So that, that slowly propelled me to start uh, doing some freelancers, uh, building some websites and, and really earning some pocket money uh, and, and really looking at it. Wow, this is really cool. I could make this as a as a job, you know. Uh, but I think after finishing the whole multimedia uh, degree, I, I realized uh, there was a gap, which is I'm very technical in terms of writing film and building sites, coding front end and stuff like that during that time. Uh, my art sense was quite weak. Uh, when I mean weak, is uh, there's no big, uh, foundation to it. So I took up a foundation course, uh, just a one year thing to really, really understand and learn about what uh, art foundation is. Uh, I think that itself sort of positioned me to uh, really understand and merge between uh, what I have on the technicality of like uh, doing film and also filming and stuff like that. But when you put all that together, right, I think the question comes when we started to work is, the question is, uh, is there any jobs for, for that kind of career? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think I, I started getting jobs as a multimedia designer. Basically what we, we do is everything uh, from web, from graphics of, uh, I would say from prints to web to all the way to motion graphics. Uh, and in fact, sometimes we also do a little bit of 3D animation. Um, back then we were, using some of the tools to create some really awesome 3D uh, typography stuff. Uh, and uh, so this is a follow-up to, to how my education is, is, right? So while doing all this web, I think I've uh, been venturing for past 
five, six years uh, really doing multimedia itself. Uh, I somehow landed in a job to do visual effects, uh, really do real films, visual effects. So I have a very short sting there for two years to really do films, uh, really, really excited about the job. Uh, but of course, I think uh, as time passed, you soon to realize uh, that is not the, the thing you want to venture into uh, due to, I think, the, the, the industry at that time. Uh, so I started venturing back to, um, I think, web or app development, uh, where I will work with some of uh, my friends and even pick up some projects that we you really use. Uh, I think the, in terms of application design, so we, we, we've been doing a few jobs about that, and then that got really uh, interesting because while I was doing that, uh, in, in relation to that, I was actually also uh, trying to uh, map the business needs, or you could say the client's needs uh, in achieving their, their, their targets or goals. Uh, that's where uh, the whole stakeholder or even client management comes in place where as a freelancer, you might even need to do that. And, and sometimes you might even need to do uh, market research and, and stuff like that. And as well as planning out, uh, building the whole, uh, I think the app itself, how can it uh, meet the business goals and also uh, the, the uncertainty of uh, the, uh, the market acceptance of the product, right? So uh, as we were doing that for a few, time, a few years and um, I think that's where suddenly, I think being a freelancer, uncertainty strike, you want to look for something that's more secure and a bigger challenge. And then uh, I was looking around for companies and I, I started to venture around with startups. So actually, probably like in 2014, I actually bumped into a company, a startup company, whereby they told me, hey, uh, there's this role for you, it's called UI UX designer. Uh, it suits you. Because uh, my question is like, what, what, up, up to, uh, What's that? Uh? What's you and what's I and what's X, right? So what I got to know, it's basically a user interface and user experience designer. Uh, but um, the question is like, hey, I'm, I'm not even UX, UI designer. Probably I'll get a web designer or even multimedia design job. That's something what I'm familiar with, which I do everything. So when we actually sit down and discuss, well, I think Malaysian industry at the time, UI, UX is still very new. Uh, to really get someone who is very experienced in UI, UX feel, it's probably not really existent. Mostly it's overseas. So it's still building up, but they need a skill set of a few things that as a freelancer we've been doing, uh, which is also, uh, I think, research, design, uh, or stakeholder management, and as well, everything you talk about, like the whole 360 of building a product is. That's, I think, the, the main attributes they're looking at. And I had the opportunity to work with, uh, I think, a, 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 a head of design who, who believed in me and actually trained me up to, from then on, I think, uh, starting up as a startup, UI, UX designer, uh, picking out from web application. Uh, well, and that's that's where I started progressing uh, to really, um, I think, trying to be a student and learn and unlearn things I've I've sort of picked up during that time and we learn everything about UI, UX as the whole industry changes. So that's where I really started uh, to venture a lot of my time and effort to really understand what's UI UX and really building or, or, or learning as I go. So uh, I think it's only took me around six years in real UI UX role. But before that, I think itself was more like a multimedia designer or the all-rounder. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so that, that's the journey. So you said that uh, when you jump into your UX, you're, you're working, uh, you're learning while working the UI UX. What is UI UX, right? Yeah. So imagine when you're presented that kind of role that you're hired in and you're not, right? Um, your your curiosity is what does this role require you to do? And what does this role is future for you? Uh, what happened to the role that I have spent almost half my years of working? Uh, what, does it still exist? Am I extinct? So when you realize that, that you realize that, well, um, industry does change. It's time for me to change. And I think that's the, the traits that when I was jumping around industry from uh, web to films to stuff, right? There's this learning that I have from, I think, uh, some educators is can you really unlearn what you have learned and relearn something uh, 
that is current. And that's the hardest thing to do. So apply the same model I have. So I tried to to, to basically build a, a UI UX role, uh, basically studying how overseas is doing, uh, understanding process needed and the job scope they're doing and the challenges the current designers are, are exploring. Um, match that up together, you basically have a very good blueprint how you want to progress this role. Yeah. Okay, so just like you said uh, before, uh, you learn the UIX role, UIX uh, concept. So can you explain with us what actually UIUX design? So what is the key concept of UIUX design? Uh, can you can you share with us about it? Well, uh, there there are also a lot of uh, I think very very deep or jargony uh, kind of concepts to it. But I I normally roll with a very simple concept that everyone can understand very clearly, right? So. Um, Let's break apart UI and UX itself. Uh, they are two complement very well. UI is basically the whole user interface, right? So the goal of user interface number one is to basically uh, the, the whole presentation of it uh, and and the whole uh, you you presenting the content and delivering the message, right? So that's 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 what the purpose uh, UI is for. Uh, to me, it's for UX, right? Um, it's on another level whereby you talk about experiences. And experiences, everyone can explain many ways, but there's one that I think I really, really reflect is uh, even some some product owners or some of my peers always say this: UX is basically common sense. Oh, okay. Right. So imagine if you need to develop a flow or a funnel uh, to ask them to sign up for something, right? Then you will need to ask yourself from the UX perspective, right? What is the goal or meaning to this person? Or, or the, I would say, the urges for this person to sign up, right? They don't just give you data, right? So that's where I think the, the whole experience, the whole thinking of as a UX designer comes in and try to map up uh, in terms of journeys and uh, basically behaviors. Are. And as a, as a, I think, user or, or a human, we're actually designing for ourselves. So, so it's really, to me, as a, as a very simple one-liner, it's like common sense. Uh, applying that uh, with a complement of UI direction, you you probably will achieve uh, that the whole concept that I talk about. And, and this is personally uh, my personal kind of um, concept. There might be multiple versions, but I think they both all deliver the same kind of uh, objective. So before uh, I'm going to the, my personal next question, so I want to like say to the audience, just a friendly reminder for our beloved audience. If you guys ada soalan that related to our topic, our topics today, jangan segan untuk uh, just put it your question in our comment section below. So yeah, for also it's like my personal question lah. Since right now I'm handling the UI UX design for our own ongoing project. Can you share with me and other audience and how do you like implement the UI UX design to website or mobile apps? Like what is the import, yeah, important criteria or measurement you will take first when you start to design your UI UX? Um, so I will normally break it into, uh, I won't merge UI UX together. Normally I break into two, uh, two different disciplines. Uh, let's go with the UX portion itself, right? Uh, so the first phase of UX is I think anyone will agree that uh, research is really key. So the question is what type of research, right? There are probably two types of research that uh, a UX uh, de uh, department will need to look at. Number one is actually uh, the user research, uh, identifying uh, the type of targets or this product is really designed or built for. Second one is actually the market research. And market research is where it's very close to how business actually think. Uh, now, you want to launch this particular product to this target segment, right? How is the market landscape like for this product? And that uh, really uh, gels in together uh, to strengthen, really understand the, the target and the market, right? Um, now, by understanding that, right, with, with this knowledge, right, you will be able to uh, really identify what's the, I would say, um, X factor or opportunities. And that's where the opportunities comes in, right? Like when you build a product itself, uh, there is a core functionality of the product. 
Uh, then the question comes is that why does UI UX still in place uh, in terms of how stakeholders see it? To them is that we see things a bit different. We have thought through process to map out with, uh, really understand uh, the user's needs and the user's uh, sentiment and stuff like that. And as well as also trying to help reach uh, their goal, which is the business target. So I think that the role of UX is very broad on the research phase where we need to cross validate and, and the gray area of uh, a lot of product is that they do not understand how does the user, uh, I think, feel or behave or opinion on that only after when they develop the product. So I think for, for UX itself, it's really bringing up to the, the, the user's perspective really upfront. But at the same time, I will also have to warn that business perspective needs to be planning together. To me, a good UX designer is not just about user, but you have a user and you have all your business stakeholders as well, business as well. So how do you, can you leverage on um, the users and to create opportunities uh, to business to, to hit, right? So once you do that already, right, then you will start doing the whole uh, phase of trying to create prototypes, low fidelity wireframes. Well, this one is all really good, uh, but to me, this is all processes needed as a design designer. As, as though if I want to compare this role as uh, someone building a building, right? First, you must understand who this building is built for, like market research and stuff like that, right? Let's go speed up. And then when you start drawing the plans, right? You sketch out the whole uh, plan on how uh, the blueprint of the, the, the building. And we are, we are also doing that as well. And we are drawing the whole wireframe, right? We want to test out some of this uh, simulation and you create wireframe prototype to test out those scenarios, which uh, to see uh, if this actually accommodates all scenarios, right? Once once you can go through all these things, right? Um, you you probably have a very good uh, validation on, on the whole usability and the user part. But there comes, of course, uh, always putting a business in mind uh, of reaching the target. Now, how can you convey your user experience strategy to meet with the business strategy? That that is the, I think the the most uh, crucial factor of a UX designer because uh, to get buy-ins from non-design centric or non-design literary person, right? It could be anyone, tech, business, or even sometimes uh, even designer don't understand the design concept. Uh, is to bridge them to the one particular. Uh, a line point, which is the business. Everyone agrees to the business target. How do you use and understand on user? And also how do you leverage on user uh, experience design to map out with the target? And that's somehow uh, how I would sum up uh, the, the whole process. I would, I would sum up for UX design. For the UI design, right? Uh, to me, that covers a few area. Uh, of course, UI, we all talk about how does it look and, and all the impression, right? But when you actually put uh, a different perspective or importance to UI itself, if I were to um, treat UI as, I would say the whole presentation or the whole positioning of the product itself, if my specific target uh, audience is to a segment of, for example, um, let's say a, a Malay, Malay uh, young, maybe a Malay crowd uh, that does not uh, does not actually uh, very fluent in, let's say, technology. And we are actually a tech uh, company that does a, a, maybe a web app, right? How can we use not just uh, UX, right? But how can we use UI, the first, uh, I think, impression to the users, not to scare them away? Uh, is there certain area of, uh, I think, strategy in terms of design strategies we can apply on the UI itself. And, and that, that whole part goes very, very deep. Lah. So it really depends how we want to use the whole UI to address it. To me, also UI is also need to address on, I think, uh, one of the key things that really reflect, uh, I think, last year when I saw someone actually try to use an e-wallet who is actually partially blind. Um, and, and also, uh, reflecting to that is that this person is buying Burger King with three more friends who are also uh, partially blind uh, with the sticks and they managed to pay. Uh, that was super surprising. I was actually taking a peep at it. It's, it's interesting is how does the whole structure of the 
that that wallet itself uh, being positioned to enable even someone with a, a disability can actually maneuver with it without uh, I think hitting any roadblocks. Uh, so that's that's where I think uh, UI also comes in very he heavily, right? When you look into the whole aspect of it. Uh, but I think these are the two I think highlights I want to highlight only like, That's basically too deep to talk about. Okay. Right, so before we go into our next uh, question, so I have uh, we have a uh, two question from our audience. Yep. Uh, one is from Siti Hasna. Uh, in real situation, how do you measure UX success for mobile apps or web design? Okay, um, so that's a very very good question, right? Uh, mobile, I would say, how do you measure success, right? Uh, success there's two two particular, I would say two particular angle to it or or more, but I will just take two. One is on the experience uh, matrix. The other one is on the business matrix. Now the question is, uh, how do you define as a good user experience? There must be a particular matrix you want to apply to it. Uh, it could be usability, uh, or it could be the whole flow um, uh, measurement uh, that's performing really well, the conversion and stuff like that. So to me, uh, I, I, I was also uh, looking into this uh, a few months back at where uh, there is this particular UX matrix called the UX core card that you might want to look at it. It's a very interesting model where they measure uh, five, five or five key design factors to different uh, to put you in a grading stages. And why I say grading stages is that each stages really reflect how the current scenario is. Sometimes experience cannot be achieved due to uh, constraint maybe with your architecture, uh, business, compliance, and stuff like that. And they give you a range and where you have a, a gauge of what is the experience scorecard level you're expecting. Then also going back to the business, right? So to the business, when you talk about designing a, a, a mobile app, right? What the question comes is, what is the success to the business whole, uh, stakeholder? Uh, well, let's, let's, let's uh, assume that they will say, well, if you can, if we convert, uh, let's say, 10,000 people by end of this month, that is success to me. Then the question is, um, if you want to measure this, right? Let's say you do a great flow, awesome user experience. You hit the 10,000 within a month. Uh, there also need to be a mapping. Like what kind of efforts and experience has been applied to this to achieve uh, this uh, goal versus with if you, UX has never been uh, part of this project, uh, they might not be able to achieve this uh, as quick as possible. So if I were to deliver a very, uh, I would say, let's say rating one to five in terms of experience, uh, five being the best user experience, no friction and everything, we deliver a, a, a great tree and we hit the uh, the whole delivery of 10,000 subscribers within a month and that's, that's flawless, right? So the, the UX designer needs to actually also have that discussion with, uh, I think the product itself, and be part of the discussion to also uh, raise the whole uh, measurement. So designs had never measured before, but business has. So it's how you map your design matrix measurement to the business matrix. Business matrix exists. So when you do that, uh, of course, you will see the return, which is people start to value, uh, I think, UX, and they see the value uh, because we just don't just do the design. and we hit the target without without really uh, really mapping how what contributed to the designer. So it's a it's, it's a very uh, interesting topic. Uh, I think uh, that's something I was trying to solve for the part longest time as well. Uh, it is still something I would, I'm still trying to validate. But as as you go, I think uh, as a UX team, this will be the number one problem you will have to get uh, people to value how valuable is a UX department in the company. All right, so I hope uh, the explanation from Ray uh, answer your question, Siti Asna. So yeah. for, our, for our next uh, question is from Chelston Petrus. So any tips and tricks to make UI UX for website more professional but not boring? And any recommend UI UX tools for beginners? Uh, so I think uh, the, the key to success to this is to constantly uh, test. Or I would say, if you can, uh, use AB, AB models, uh, but AB models, when I talk about AB models, it's not just 
A and B, but it, you want to try out with multiple permutation to validate your solution. Basically, try to prove yourself wrong all the time uh, with multiple solution and use data to help you make the decision. Uh, I think that itself, uh, you will really, really understand what, what we will achieve because uh, over time, we are also building simulation in our head. This might work, this might not. But surprisingly, is what your user wanted might just be a button. So I, I would advocate to uh, t test it or even uh, if you if you have any idea of it, right? try to iterate and, and try to prove your current idea wrong all the time and test it with real users. And that slowly you will actually achieve, uh, I think, mastery in terms of getting the right experience. And, and PS, right? Uh, sometimes the best experience, the outcome might not be the one you design. Oh. All right. So it's a good answer from, uh, from Ray. So I hope it's really helped you, Chelston. And yeah, as you said uh, before, uh, always prove yourself wrong all the time. So, and also you said uh, just now, you need to like always keep testing your design to a user. So my question is, uh, so when, when we design, when we design the some things, so do we need like every part, uh, every part of our design, uh, we need to like keep testing it in real user or just do the all design and then test it to user. So I think uh, the more is, uh, if you do enough user research, right, it should already uh, keep you in a in a direction or a scope for you to explore, right? And you need to know who you design this product for. Because when when any any stakeholder will tell you, I'm designing this for the Malaysian market, there are probably like so many groups of uh, people so many type of behavioral people, some other type of good and bad people, who are we designing for? Uh, that's where you will actually have a uh, direction. So when you have a direction, right, you basically are scaling down to test something that's very priority and valuable to you. Uh, it is just that, is that solution that you came out just now really solving the right problem or not? If it's not, uh, why do I even need to test it? It is solving the, the most highest priority problems. So that's where you need to prioritize how you actually test and validate. And sometimes the validation uh, is very interesting, uh, whereby you also question yourself after one day coming out of the design, uh, maybe over a dinner, is that question yourself, is that solution that I did just now really what the, the user actually wanted? It really depends who you tested with, right? And did I actually recruit the right test group? Is there a specific group of uh, test uh, people that have not actually validated with? Does it meet the business goals? And all these things are can cannot be solved by just thinking. That's where uh, the testing comes in. And sometimes the test is also to help you to convince your stakeholder as well, because uh, user experience. We always talk about very qualitative kind of data. Uh, if you actually put in more quantitative data, more back into it, like a product or like a, a market researcher, I think that is a very strong complement on how you can convince your stakeholder. Uh, I've seen many times, or even myself, uh, identify the great uh, opportunity for experiences, but um, not manage to convince a business stakeholder. And that's the, that's the biggest issue. Uh. Okay, so... Like uh, I have a question about uh, when we as a UI UX design uh, design our uh, products. So do you have like uh, everything about the development team and like how they could uh, implement your design in the project? Oh yes, I think this is a uh, this is something that uh, so I've, I've I've worked with some startups and some big GLCs and some uh, medium sized company, right? I think, of course, we need to actually uh, work like a team. Uh, as for me, for myself itself, if you're joining a, a, co a company, right, first you need to understand uh, what is the code base and what kind of, uh, deve uh, I would say, how do they develop the front end and the back end stuff. Really understand the whole stack of it. 
um, I would say try to be also like a product owner or product manager so understand your builder's capability so if I want to move your thinking to like building a building right I'm an architect right an architect draw the blueprint uh, go through many rounds of uh, looking at the disaster scenario if this building is stable or not now when they ha have to build it the builders are really the core uh, people who build this building based on your build blueprint uh, I will also need to know what kind of uh, bricks they are putting in uh, because I want to actually uh, know that this product will last, right? And in case, so when I talk about uh, scalability, right? Uh, if you put your attention to design systems, right? Design system is where you build the system where the system itself can build the product itself. And the developers will basically build these blocks, building blocks, where it can be reused over time. Uh, it is actually how we design will impact how they build and also understanding how they build will also help us to think about how it was designed. And at the end of the day, right, this is where uh, in any talk at all, we talk about strategy and stuff like that. Feasibility is always the problem. We can design the best things and can be developed with that kind of timeline and the kind of structure we are in right now. So understanding that upfront uh, it will really, really help uh, to just not just design, but to actually go through the whole end to end to uh, getting this ready, this product ready. So yes, it's very, very crucial that uh, it's a it's a it's a collaborative effort. So uh, for for my next question, uh, so for is it uh, better for you are you actually designer to know a little bit about coding or to know how to code? Uh, instead of like just knowing how to like design something without knowing code uh this kind of question right i think there will be a lot of people who agree and disagree with me uh but i would like to position in a way that you know um imagine if i designed uh okay imagine the web web app right now right has a radio button yeah and it's a bad experience having a radio button because uh, we wanted them to select more than two items uh, and more, furthermore and stuff like that, right? So I go and I change the whole app, remove the radio button to a, a checkbox button, for example. I send it to the tech and the tech reject and send it back. Uh, this will impact the whole infrastructure of the app because this is a global change. Uh, technically, it's not possible. Then as as a, as a stakeholder, I ask you, hey, hey, uh, hey, look, man, why why do you even uh, change the kind of design that that you cannot even deliver? Have you not thought about and talked to tech about uh, feasibility? Right. So because you are unfamiliar with even the term, uh, you 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 just probably do not know how how the the call function is, and and you just believe that, yeah. right? Similar to tech, right? When when we're designing stuff, I think the, it's good that they also understand uh, some of the design stuff as well. Uh, basically, I wouldn't say good to know code, but is you can actually uh, understand the concept of coding. Uh, where, if I want to put React JS as a good example, right? React JS is basically a, a, a influence to design systems how React system build components over components and how design system have atom or molecules to become a component. And, and that is a very good complement on actually how they actually co-relate each other and learn from each other and evolve, become a design system. So if you want to become a, a, a successful product designer, you must at the very least understand uh, the concept of coding. And if you do understand how to code, well, uh, you basically step a uh, step ahead of a lot of designers up front. Okay. okay, thank you for the answer. So, uh, hey, uh, Rick, uh, we have uh, three questions from our audience. So let's go one by one. So first okay. from Danny General, uh, is any book recommend recommendation or online resources for learning and improving UI UX skills? Uh, you mean books and stuff like that, right? Uh, yeah. so so um, let me see there's a lot actually well uh, so number one is I think in medium.com you have a lot of uh, 
I would say case studies and also UX strategies and stuff like that. Uh, those are really good. But uh, there's one particular book, I think it's called the UX Strategy by Jamie Levy. Yeah, I, I, I really like, uh, I think, her UX strategy uh, positioning and how she explained her, her journey uh, in really, really uh, applying UX strategy. So, uh, when, so when you actually was trying to go into the craft of UI UX, right? People always think about UI UX is Sketch App, XD, uh, vectors and stuff like that, right? Uh, I want to change your mindset a little bit. UX is not uh, vector or uh, product design itself. It is whole the whole UX strategy, uh, the whole thinking process about it. Uh, and, and I think uh, the book that I talk about, the UX strategy book, there are multiple ones, but particularly Jamie Levy one is the really good ones. Once you understand about UX strategy, how uh, UX strategy is achieved, I can just give you a brief, basically, uh, business strategy is always applied to every single company. They always have business strategy. They're always trying to figure out how to hit the strategy, how to hit the target with the strategy. UX strategy is we where we come in and complement uh, or assist and support uh, to, to help using user experience to hit and also uh, work with the business strategy to hit the target. And UX strategy comes in normally with, well, when you have constraint, when you have problems, user problems. So like I have a great strategy, I just not sure why my users doesn't like it. And that's where UX strategy come in. So the whole thinking is the most valuable part uh, where now, uh, I think as it evolves, right? I think a lot of this UX uh, execution work uh, is sort of preset already, and then you can get a lot of resources. So I think you might want to actually venture into UX strategy, uh, really, really deep into it, really understanding the core essence of how this UX brings back very huge value to, to uh, I think your your career as well. So uh, as like uh, Ray mentioned before, the the Online book is UX strategy, how to devise innovative digital products and that people want. So you guys can check it at Google. So for our next uh, question is from Brian Ting. Is there often having communication barrier between designers and developers? If yes, may I know what is the most common issue you have met and how do you resolve the issue? Uh, yes, uh, this is like a everyday, everything, everyday thing. Like, oh. So you will face with two type of two type of problems. I would say the common one. There are multiple. One is the front end one. One is the I would say more on the back end stuff. So on the front end stuff is basically to us, uh, you know, every time you build a product as you scale, right? Certain things are really redeveloped all the time. Um, I don't think it's on the tech prop side fault that they are constantly developing the same thing. It is how we communicate with the front end really like having a conversation with you, hey, um, here's the systems that we're, we're built that we will be reusing in terms of how we design our application. Uh, and, and that's the, the, the plan, long-term plan. And that's how I think the front-end team will start planning and building components like that. But if that conversation doesn't happen, right, whatever you send to them, they'll just build it. And each designer or each cook will actually cook differently sometimes because of mistakes. To them is, wow, uh, every page is different. Well, that's how it is. I, I think we should optimize that. I think having that optimized, then comes the biggest problem because normally we are all talking about coding the same uh, front end stuff, that's the issue. If we can mitigate that, right, then we can start talking about actually doing something more interactive. The, the ja I would say, uh, if, you, if you understand me, the interactive portion of things, JavaScript stuff and stuff, yeah. which currently, I mean, we can't even solve that communication within front end. Those things are like, hey, don't talk about it, right? So it's, it's really step by step. And how can you actually optimize the work of a front ender to deliver the quality? And also how does the, the designer itself being able to communicate uh, the plan, how you design uh, that you can also optimize as well. So that's one. The second one is actually the back end part. Uh, well, how you sometimes you design the, the flow itself uh, that might really create more uh, call API calls, uh, create more flows and stuff like that. I I, I really think that one is just uh, really comms. And when I mean comms is that 
you should actually have a discussion team within your business, your product, your tech and everything. So business will align them, the developers, the targets, what they want to achieve. And uh, you, I think UX will actually also align on how you achieve it with user experience. Can we actually reduce the flow? Can we actually use, uh, uh, I think, pre-filled data? Can we actually not put in this input fields and stuff like that? And when you give that discussion in the brainstorming team, right, the backend designer, it's actually designing the product with you. Rather than uh, trying to tell them why you do it, they are designing with you. And that's normally, uh, that causes all the conflict if, if you don't do that. Uh, it's basically now a designer needs to be able to present and convince and also tell them why you do it, uh, but they were never involved. So that's the kind of common uh, problems you will face, uh, problem with tech. Lah. And the last one is, I will, I will say in a very, uh, a very overview one, right? Any solutions that we design must always be uh, I think what's what's the best for the business, but what's best for the business might not be met because of time and resources. And all this, when you think about it, right, time and resources can be added if uh, stakeholders were to invest, right? But if we are not able to, and we still need to run lean, right? I think it's where developer and designer need to sit together. Like, let's scope out a MVP version that is, I think both sides can agree it is something stable, something is quality and can hit the target with the business as well, agree, and break into, I think, stages of development. So this is an ongoing kind of discussion, like how you would actually discuss with uh, the developers how to achieve uh, your goal. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, uh, that's, that's the kind of problem and that's the common problem that I, I am as well solving, uh, you will face and the list will go on. But once you start, getting them uh, into the discussion, I think those problems will slowly, slowly uh, not be there. All right, it's a, lot, uh, it's a good answer. And yeah, uh, so for our next uh, question is from Audrey Grace. Uh, so any tips for fresh graduate on how to venture into UI UX field without any art background? Also, is portfolio necessary to apply as an UI UX designer? Uh, very interesting question. Uh, to me, I always think that it's the portfolio itself, right? Uh, okay, I think, uh, let me see, how do I answer this? Interesting. So there's a main angle to it, right? So as a fresh design, uh, I think a fresh UI UX designer, right? Is um, the question is, you might need to have more exposure to different projects or different case study. Uh, how, how you, every project might be different and every project will have its own challenges. Uh, in the real life, right? And you will definitely learn from that. So I would say for a very start, right? Actually ask yourself, right? What kind of uh, product that really, really in, in, uh, intrigues you that you want to be part part of and you want to venture the next two, three or four years into this whole uh, scope of product. So you, we can talk about uh, financial tech. We can talk about uh, HR tech. We can talk about anything else at all uh, because the scope is really, really large. But when you enter to this, right, I think first is trying to understand what does it take for a UX and UX designer to be relevant in the company. Understand that and apply uh, all these processes that you learn. Not all processes can be applied, but try to figure out a process that can be suitable for how, uh, this, this company that you joined and start applying to it and start iterating and, and validating the process you have. Because while you're going through that, right, a lot of times uh, the problem is that if we have to buy the books itself, UX process is something that not every stakeholder or everyone actually understand, uh, but only us who understand. They will actually understand when you actually deliver the, the value. So I would say it's trial and error also to test out and validate yourself to, to try out multiple processes. But at the end of the day, I think is to uh, work as many different uh, projects if you can uh, to really learn all these uh, experiences from there. And that's where slowly you progress. But of course, at the end of the day, I think the cheat code is if you learn the UX strategy first, then you, 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 you'll be able to sit down and actually plan out your roadmap uh, where you want to be. And so when you know where you want to be, you start planning out where you need to hit by uh, 
milestones. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, maybe the last question because yeah, the time is running out. So yeah, it's the last question from me. So when we want to design the UI for any web apps, it's, uh, it's recommended to start with the low fidelity level first, then proceed to high level, right? Uh, to high fidelity level, right? So can you like uh, recommend for me and the audience for the useful software for low fidelity and high fidelity? Okay, um, so I think the common common ones, right, uh, low fidelity would be like Sketch, Figma, and XC and all, right, the commons one, right, but uh, <laughs> I have a different kind of suggestion. Uh, to me, those are just tools of what you can execute, right? Uh, why do we do low fidelity? Because we want actually to uh, be very, very quickly to visualize the concept itself. So personally, I, I basically use paper and pencil and, or iPad and draw on the iPad and stuff like that, uh, like draw it out and really re ideate from that. Then only I will use my, uh, I think my application, I will say a mid, mid fidelity, uh, mid fidelity wireframes. Uh. And this mid fidelity wireframes, right? We normally just download uh, the wireframe packages that you can find online right now, which is so convenient compared to five, six years ago. Use those uh, package and just lay it down. Uh, and, and that's where you slowly, slowly get to build your own tools uh, to actually maneuver faster. So wireframes for me is basically for me to test, uh, for me to also uh, share with the stakeholder and to present the whole structure and strategy to it and stuff like that once and it's prone for changes. So speed and, and actually getting to the, the all these processes quick is how you actually apply a low and high fidelity. High fidelity normally is the last one. Uh, where everything is mostly confirmed, you just want to uh, wrap it up and do maybe presentation or even do a mock-up out of it to test it with real users. That's where we spend a bit more time to it. Uh, but to be honest, as the time, or I would say the trend changes, industry changes, there's so much conveniency being uh, available now, UX tools, that you can do that. Uh, I will say if you're working with a company that has a design system, your, your high fidelity mocks are, might even take less, 50% less time than what you do last time because you're just taking components and placing it. And question is, do you still do your mid fidelity wireframes? Mm. So sometimes I will just sketch out as sketch as possible to manage the expectation that this is still a blueprint. And uh, when I reach to a stage that when I feel it's ready and I don't need to do uh, mid fidelity, I just use my design system and whack one uh, full mockup up. So you need to be, there's no process that you need to follow. It is how you define the process. What do you need to achieve the goal? And that's where you redefine your own, I think, uh, processes and practices. Okay. So uh, did, uh, this is the final question. Lah, because, uh, okay. uh, how, did, how did you come up with the design and features when you start a new project? Uh, for example, like the touch and go e-wallet apps. Uh, did did you did you take any like uh, specific time to like design it and have idea on the design? Uh, not really. I uh, see. Uh, not just uh, the U wallet, but any other product, right? I think the first question we'll ask is, what's the problem are we solving? Right. Knowing the problem you're solving, the uh, next question is like, uh, what's the what's the business strategy? What's the strategy about uh, for this product? What do you want to achieve? What's success to you? So now understanding the, those basically objective and goals again, uh, understanding that now I have a scope that I can focus uh, my process to achieve that goal. So a product without a uh, problem, you might not be able to build a product that's usable. Uh. So I will go an angle as I try to understand what kind of problem are, are we solving? Or is there a better way to solve this problem? And that's where you slowly will have the feature or the product being defined in the meeting. All right. Thanks. So yeah, this is the 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 end for the session okay. and also the end for our Sembang Santai for season one. So wow. uh, Ray, do you have any final words you want to say? Like your encouragement to learn more in your UI UX design? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I think I think for the whole uh, UX 
or UI itself, right? It is still growing and it's still shaping and evolving uh, uh, the whole industry uh, reg regarding UX and UI. But when you actually deep dive to it, right, you will realize this role itself basically requires you to learn uh, other disciplines, be it from code to product to project to business. It's actually having all this becoming a product designer rather than a, a UX designer. I, I think product design is a more suited word uh, because the, the term UI UX is just, fan I would say fancy, but I think it's a product designer role uh, to really, really build products that uh, the user really use it and need it. And that's, that's the goal of the product designer and solving the right problem. So at the end of the day, I think it's trying to understand or try to have an overview of what this product team do. Once you have that, right, I think you will know how to work with them and as well as really grow and also let them understand what UX does. And when I call that is that we call it the infused UX in a team. Basically, when a product is a product owner were to design something or want to solve a problem, he's probably using some of your processes already. And basically we are working like a team, so like a UX team. And, and that's really, uh, I think, something that all the product or designers are trying to achieve, uh, that, that whole infuse of UX in the team, rather than being the only one preaching UX, UX every day, right? So I think uh, there is a lot of uh, constraint in terms of understanding, but I think do not give up and continue improving the craft and advocating uh, the, the whole UX uh, strategy and design and UI design as well. And, and that's that's all I can share. And feel free to connect with me as well. <laughs> uh, connect in, in LinkedIn, right? Yep. So yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Raymond, Ray, for the sharing. So for the audience who doesn't know who is uh, Ray, uh, he, he is Raymond Tian, and he, uh, he currently work at Head of User Experience Design for Touch and Go Digital. So yeah. Uh, is very experienced people and also i would like to thanks to our previous guests for this uh sebang Santa session uh, vivianti Sar, uh, v madam vivianti sarjuni uh, gm for sabah creative economy and innovation hub also i will thank to mazri mahat uh, 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 the ceo for smart bar and also daniel daniel janil and carmen fu software engineer for rambutan digital uh, Severinus, Severinus Kitingan, the president of SATA, and also Tun Amshar and Hafiz, Haf, Hazik Hafizuddin, the Asia software engineer, and also Edham Arif, the president Kinabalu Kodes, and Datuk Dr. Yusuf Yaakob, the minister of education and innovation Sabah, and Alisa Maluda, PM, uh, project manager for Rambutan Digital SF, and lastly Najwa Shafi'i, the general for data analytics Malaysia airline so yeah thank you and thank you for the audience also because keep supporting us and yeah see ya for the next season bye bye